Well, good morning and welcome to UWO Claire. Thank you for joining me on what is yet another great day to be a blue gold. It seems like I already know everyone in the room, but for those of you I haven't met personally yet, my name is Jim Schmidt. I have the great privilege of being chancellor of this amazing university. I promise I am not gonna dive into a lengthy speech on all that I've experienced in the last 10 years as chancellor, but I do think it's important to spend a little bit of time talking about how important uh, the impact of athletics has been at this institution and what the next chapter of Blue Gold Athletics will become. Student athletes have been a vital thread in the fabric of this campus for decades. Long before I came, became chancellor 10 years ago, Blue Gold athletes were making their mark in the classroom and in competition. From the National Powerhouse Basketball Program led by the legendary Ken Anderson to the back-to-back -back national championships won by our women's swimming and dive teams in the late 18, 1980s, um, excellence has long been the mark of Blue Gold athletics. From golf to softball to ice hockey to volleyball and track and field and cross country, UW-Eau Claire has had a rich tradition of winning national championships. And I'm proud to say that that tradition had continued. Um, and I wanted to let you know that I don't take credit for these, but I'm so proud that our teams have captured seven national championships in the last 10 years that I was chancellor. And I actually got to hand out the rings to an eighth one uh, for men's ice hockey who won while I was interviewing to become chancellor here. Um, I've had the privilege of watching all of these great teams proudly wear the blue and gold and represent this university so well. So I look around, I see the people who've made this a success, this success a reality for all of us. You are the reason that UW-Eau Claire is a force to be reckoned with on the playing field and in the classroom. You've helped Blue Gold's focus on success in academics and athletics. That holistic transformational pro experience that our students get is what sets us apart from so many of our competitors. We decide after consultation with our student athletes and our coaches and our faculty how to make sure our student athletes get the best experience possible. Before I introduce the person you're really here to meet this morning, and for those of you who are about to check the clock or your watch, I promise you I'm almost done. Um, for time's sake, I can't thank every person or group that has helped us get to this point by name, but I do wanna give a shout out to Michael Carney who chaired the search committee for our new athletic director. Mike and the entire search committee did an amazing job, and you're about to see the living evidence of that success. For those of you who know me well, you know that I'm a very competitive person. I like to work with people on a team and I like to challenge people to be innovative and I like to set audacious goals. I love to see our student athletes carrying grade point averages that are higher than for the campus average for all students. In fact, just last semester, the Blue Gold football team's GPA was an astonishing 3.65. And I love to see Teams win conference and national championships, and I like to set the bar high. Our new athletic director and I are a lot alike in that regard. Now, I wasn't a Division I athlete playing baseball and football, later going on to play baseball for the farm team of a major league baseball team. That wasn't really gonna be in the cards for me. But as you'll soon hear, a commitment to excellence takes many forms. And with that, it is my privilege to introduce the person who will take Blue Gold Athletics to the next level of excellence. Please give an enthusiastic welcome to our next athletic director, Jason Verdugo. collect myself here a little bit. So thank you. Um, the enthusiasm I have for today is um, I, I can't state it enough. I'm just very excited about the opportunity. And um, I'd like to share a little bit, <clears throat> uh, just a little bit about myself and how I got, how I, I got here, I think is really important. Um, First and foremost, it's an honor and a privilege to stand before you as the director of athletics. 
the feeling and the drive here this morning. Um, I try to contain myself a little bit, sitting in the back of the car and reviewing notes and what have you, but it, it is, it's an overwhelming. The, the change in a short period of time from being at an institution for 22 years and tran transitioning uh, to something that I believe is gonna be exceptional uh, for not only for me, but my entire family. So um, I like to begin by recognizing several people who've been significantly influential in my career and have helped guide me to this point. And the reason that I wanna spend time you know, um, recognizing them is simply because their input on me individually, my family, my career um, is certainly gonna inform how I lead this institution, uh, the athletics department at this institution going forward, which is really key. Um, the pride and passion that I have for athletics for comprehensive excellence for student athletes and what they achieve is critical. Um, and they, their imprint um, is significant and it's important that I get an opportunity to recognize them. So my close friends, uh, Stephen Cantwell, Max Rose and Nick Berkland and Steve Lee, businessmen in the Twin Cities who are great friends, uh, significant colleagues um, and have helped me at, at you know various times throughout my career. Um, noodling through a number of ideas and try to try to help me be a better leader um, throughout my uh, my short time um, my short time and my friendship with them and so just recognizing recognizing them and thanking them for their their uh, friendship um, to the NCAA pathway colleagues um, Peter Roby former athletic director at Northeastern and Dartmouth um, Penny Parker who is the current athletic director at Rollins College and um, Lamar Pottinger and Didi Merritt, who work within the, the NCA leadership development um, program in the NCA, I have the distinct honor and privilege to work alongside them in mentoring a number of aspiring athletic directors. And as a result, those educational opportunities continue to help me on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, help me stay at the front end of, of um, athletics and the ever-changing landscape of athletics. Um, to the Hamlin University coaches and staff who I've, I've been a part of for 22 years of, of my career, um, thank you. And more importantly, Dr. Fane East Miller, who's just been an instrumental colleague, friend, and mentor and president that I got an opportunity to work, work for and with. Uh, to my mom and my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, uh, Rachel, my niece, Kiana, and my nephew, Connor, my nephews, Connor and Chase, they're the really um, the driving point of my competitiveness. And to get to know me a little bit and what makes me tick is to get to know them. My mom and dad, tremendous story, complete sacrifice. I grew up in a very small mining town of Hayden, Arizona. We transitioned to the north side of Tucson. And really at the start of it was because my brother was a tremendous athlete, had a tremendous career. Um, as, as a student athlete in college, but really the sacrifice that my parents put forth um, for us to have those opportunities and commute and for us to go to a bigger school was, was a significant leap um, at, during that time. And so um, they're all very competitive. I have one nephew that is gonna start medical school. My niece is in the business as an SWA and athletic, assistant athletic director at Alma College. Um, but the most competitive one is probably my sister-in-law, um, Rachel, who really we've gotten close over the last couple years. And really with her guidance and help, this is the leap of faith, faith that um, I needed in my life. And I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to do that. Uh, my grandfather, Verland, the most patient man, he's 80 years old, reads two books a week. Um, can't say enough, but the reason that I mention him is because I've grown to really understand him and his patience and that has helped me become a better leader, um, recognizing his patience and love for me and my family. Um, to my partner, Laura, um, thank you. The best things come when you're looking for them the least, right? So um, thank you for being here. My son, Justice, and then our other, other two family members and kids, Mila and Vince, um, they're spitfires and they're awesome. So. Thank you to them. Uh, to the search committee, Dr. Michael Carney, thank you. It's been fantastic to get an opportunity to 
work alongside you in a short period of time. Everything that you exhibited during um, the interview process was top notch. And as a result, that only increased my excitement to become the athletic director here. Um, when I went back, I had a conversation with many people, including Laura, and I said, you know, when I went there, I was just hoping that I was going to become the athletic director. And when I left there, I just had a feeling that I was going to become the athletic director. And that process was because of first class professionalism throughout the course. And um, so thank you for that. Um, to uh, Chops Hancock, Dick Johnson, and Sue Tights, uh, Teets, um, thank you very much for your involvement in the process. Certainly um, some tough questions, great presence, um, but it, it is without question the pride and passion uh, as you stand before, before me during that process um, really, really showcase the excitement and honor and privilege that I get an opportunity to, to, be, the, to be the athletic director. Um, and then last but not least, Chancellor Schmidt, I'm so honored to get to the opportunity to assist you in accomplishing the Institutional Strategic Initiative of National Distinction. When Chancellor Schmidt set up here um, and talked about the number of national championships and all the high-end academic aspirations, continued aspirations that we have, it's right in line. Um, I've had the opportunity to serve on a, on a committee he made quite the impression, I know many of you I shared that, he made quite the impression on me. And um, as a result, you know, this is, this is what led to this opportunity, this aggressive pursuit to become the athletic director here. Um, and transitioning, who I am as a leader, I think is really important. Um, as I describe all those people before you, these next four words are certainly the, what describes me as as a leader, what you're gonna get from me as a leader at this institution. Um, consistency, that's been a hard word to achieve in any athletic realm if you look across um, any significant athletic department that has aspirations to continue to uh, achieve at a high level, there has to be a level of consistency. Consistency in operations and what we do day to day, consistency in commitment from our student athletes, uh, consistency from the coaches, in terms of um, working um, rigorously through their daily process. Um, you know, for me, that's really important is consistency. It's a, it's a hard thing to achieve, especially when you have the emotions of up and down through athletics. It's just really difficult. Um, but again, a, a commitment to consistency is really important. I share this in honesty, I think, being very honest and transparent with student athletes, honest and transparent with alumni and committee members and constituents in the community, and more importantly, our student athletes. Um, giving them honest feedback on a daily basis is really key for their personal and professional growth. This is such an infliction point in their time, um, in their transition to adulthood, um, and our job is to figure out a way to help them be successful adults. This is an inflection point of where they're gonna go and our job is to figure out a way to be honest with them so that they can recorrect any mistakes that may have been made um, and then acknowledge them when they do exceptionally well. I think that's a hard thing for most because we work so on such a fast pace athletically that as soon as we win a game or we have an accomplishment, it's on to the next. And so I think it's just time to sit back and then be very honest with them and acknowledge that and say thank you for your hard work and dedication. Enjoy it for that, that short period of time and then move on. Aggressive, um, as I described, my aggressive pursuit for this opportunity, um, that is in my nature. I'm very calculated in what I've done and what I aspire to do. The aggressive pursuit to be, again, I'm not gonna shy away from that and make bold comments, but I'm gonna to work to be a, a top 10 Learfield Cup nationally recognized athletic department. I'm gonna pause there for a second and let that sink in because those are bold national distinctive aspirations that can be achieved here. There's strategic alignment, there's community involvement, there's community care, and obviously facilities, um, and student athletes that have the ability to do that. And so again, 
national distinction, that's what national distinction for our department will look like. Um, and last but not least, personal. One thing that I know in this business, and as I described all those people before you, um, having a personal relationship um, matters. Having personal relationships with faculty and staff and students and deans and the president and chancellor and those in the community having personal relationships is critically important. There is no way that you can achieve something by yourself. It takes everyone. And that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to the most. Um, as I close, um, before I take some questions, uh, to the coaches, staff, alumni, and community members, I'll use a phrase um, that was shared with me last month uh, from, from a colleague uh, that, that I now get an opportunity to call uh, a friend and boss. Progress will move at the speed of trust. Progress will move at the speed of trust. My job is to figure out a way to earn your trust. And how I'll do that is by my work ethic every single day and my commitment to this institution. Um, I look forward to continuing to um, get an opportunity to meet and know each and every one of you, um, our coaches and staff and community members. And um, I look forward to just a, a great career here at UW-Eau Claire. Thank you. So if, do we have any questions? Go ahead. First and foremost, what uh, brought you to the university? What drew you to this uh, opportunity? Well, a, a couple things. Obviously, I, when you join NCA committees, um, you get an opportunity to meet a number of different people. And for me, I'm very, um, very calculated in you know, assessing people and are they good at their job, are they not good at their job. But more importantly through that, the pride and passion that they have for where they're at is really key to me. It always tells me, you know, let me revert back quick. When I was in the interview process, I asked, several times, you know, how many alums are in the room? And there were several. So first and foremost, during that process, that struck me because there's a number of alums that, that work here and live in the, in the community and care about it. And um, so that just validated what my initial meeting and interaction with Chancellor Smith was. The way he talked about the institution was beaming with pride. The way he talked about the athletic department, um, and that was a significant attraction. And so that first and foremost, but as you start to look at um, obviously all the financial commitment related to facilities, significant accomplishments at, at, that he described, seven national championships in 10 years, um, uh, again, those, that's what drew me to the institution among many other things. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I was a, I started out as a baseball coach at Hamlin University. Um, I was there at a very young age, at 26 years old, so I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to do that. Moved to the Twin Cities, and like many, when you start your young coaching career, you think you're going to be there for a very short period of time. Um, and opportunities con to continue to, to present themselves and grow as you know, assistant athletic director, director of compliance, um, director of athletics, and at that particular time had aspirations to go back to my alma mater, which was Arizona State University. Um, but we, I felt like the best thing for me and my son, uh, my son who has significant autism and uh, is 22 years old, will be 23 in August, and he's in, um, he's in the Twin Cities and settled in and has a nice uh, house and staff, so he's well taken care of. And so, um, what we've done and what we've accomplished at Hamlin, I'm very proud of. Um, two major facilities projects along with a number of other initiatives that, that led us to have um, some success. And success is relative to, you know, I shared this with the committee, certainly 
levels of success is different based on where you're at and expectations. And um, the brand here is very much different in some cases. There's a lot of similarities, um, but our opportunity for the national distinctive uh, athletic department is well within our reach here. Yeah. Well, there's a lot, probably assessing, you know, assessing the department as fast as I can. I think one of the things that I said and I've learned over time, when I first started as an administrator, the natural reaction was to impart my, uh, my own stamp on it right away, right? Um, and sometimes you rush into making decisions that have long lasting consequences, if you will. Um, for me, as I, and I'll hold true to my word, for me is obviously evaluate open positions that needed to be addressed. That would probably be first and foremost. The second part of that, um, without a doubt, is, is getting an opportunity to know all of our staff, you know, and evaluating what their process is. For those that have achieved at a high level significantly over an extended period of time, how have they done that? For, inst for other sports that either are starting like baseball or lacrosse or some of sports that may have um, experienced maybe some ups and downs at times. Um, you know, how do we assess that to duplicate, you know, consistency and success? And, and again, for, for me, um, is, as I said, listening is going to be a really critical thing for me. Um, and that, that's, you know, experience over time. Um, which again is going to be really hard, but I always then I go back to what I said about my grandfather and how he influenced me about being patient and methodical and listening. And so, um, you know, and strategic wise, there's not a better strategist as far as leader that than I know than my brother. You know, so new, getting an opportunity to to talk to him on a day to day basis about transformational change and comprehensive excellence, um, you know, he'll help, he'll help guide me as well, so. Very quiet room. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the 23rd, obviously the sooner, I mean, it's actually, you'll probably be on the car ride home today. <laughs> I asked for permission if I could do that. Um, obviously there's some, you know, as we have open positions or some of the things that we need to think about, um, when you talk about aggressive pursuit, there will be some aggressive pursuit of individuals that I think would be great fits for our department. And more so because they'll be well-rounded in their identity. You know, for, for me, coaches, as I've said before, and as my dad said, you can't be, you can't be a good coach unless you're a teacher. So the expectation that our, our coaches um, are like our professors, really. It's just their classroom is different. You know, do they have the opportunity to connect with student athletes in a way that, um, you know, good leaders, I'll say this, you want kids to work, to work in a way that they're not fearful of making mistakes, but when they do make a mistake, it's, you know, and they're sad or they're disappointed because they've let the coach down in, in ways because they're, um, they have just a strong affinity and respect for the coach. And that is, there's a distinct difference. You know, the old school of coaching is very different than what it is now. And my expectations for our coaches is to treat our student athletes with dignity and respect. Uh, and um, more importantly, teach them. And again, that means at times you're gonna have to be hard on them as well. But more, more importantly, you know, it's a short span to get an opportunity to make an impact on a student athlete. And the only way you can do that is love and care about them. I know people shy away hearing that word, love and care about student athletes, but the reality of it is you want to get the best of them. That's what you have to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I think a couple things. Um, first and foremost, I, and again, there's a, there's a variety of things, so I'll try to be succinct and short. 
probably the number one thing is can they recruit? You know, what is what does that look like in the recruiting process? You know, are do they have an organizational skill set that's going to allow them to be a fantastic recruiter, right? And if they and if they lack that skill set to a degree, are they smart enough to surround people around them to do that? Um, and Obviously, we have a beautiful campus and opportunity to showcase something wonderful in the community, um, first and foremost. And I know facilities are important, but I've shared this over and over. If you ask any student athlete at the end of their four years that had a successful experience and you had to rate from top to bottom things that were important to them, right? The 18-year-old that comes in that is wowed by certain things in some cases might be a little bit shallow, but the 22 year old, the 23 year old that might be leaving and for some of our hockey student athletes who are older than that, that might be leaving, they're all gonna revert back to the relationships and the people. And the relationships and the people are, are far more important than any building, right? So for me is, does this coach have the quality to, um, an ability to connect with student athletes in a way that Again, that's very unique, and, and, um, but that's what I love about the business, right? So those are, those are some, of the, some of the significant qualities that are really important, so. Yeah. Nick, pleasure to meet you. Hopefully we talk a lot. Let's make that. <laughs> All right, you heard it there. So it's a standing. We try to break the ice a little bit, so it's a standing. All right. Um, you know, a visionary, and you know, if I'm being really honest, somebody somebody that's going to have the ability to manage a big roster as well. If you look at a majority of the teams that were in the College World Series, or um, they have the ability to develop student athletes. You know, they typically have, uh, you know, a junior and senior related team um, that, you know, has come up again, for lack of a better term, through the farm system of the, of, the in, of the institution, meaning, you know, again, have they developed playing junior varsity games? Have they developed, um, you know, a niche in terms of um, they, maybe they came in as a second baseman and they, they transitioned into becoming a catcher. So somebody that can develop student athletes in ways that be really strategic. Um, the beauty about this conference, and I'm not going to shy away from that, is you're tested right away, right? So you know where you stand right away. If you're a top two team, top three team in this conference in any sport, you know, you're one of the better teams nationally. And so when people ask what's the attraction, maybe I'm a little crazy, but that's the attraction. But from the baseball sense, I think there's some wonderful candidates and teachers out there. Um, that would really relish at the opportunity to lead, lead our baseball program. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll say this, it was really difficult. Um, in 2011, you know, kind of the pinnacle of my coaching career, we won a championship, got an opportunity to play in the, in the regional at the other purple school in this league. Um, <laughs> I already know. Purple, purple, hasn't, purple and me haven't synced up really well over time, so we'll say that. Um, but much respect to, to that baseball program and institution. Nonetheless, for me, it was really difficult, but the pinnacle in 2011, getting the opportunity to do that and then transitioning. And, and for, mo for some of those student athletes, I got the opportunity to share with them this opportunity that I currently stand and have earned is really a lot because of the hard work and dedication that those student athletes from, you know, my first team that broke the school record for wins, um, you know, which was my second team at Hamlin to, you know, 2011. So um, I'm better suited to do what I'm doing now. I'll be very honest with you. I feel like, um, you know, strategic and vision is something, but I haven't shied away from from giving some advice on occasion. But I'll be very calculated, you know, coaches coach and let them coach. That's what we, we hire them to do. So.
Yeah. Good question. Um, things I learned over time, you know, I think every, every student athlete and every athlete at times wish it can hit the reset button, right? God, I wish I could go back with the base of knowledge, not necessarily the physical, the physical maybe the physical changes, but the knowledge and that really goes back to when I talk about consistency, um, something that I'm really proud of that I've done in my career and try to, you know, again, it's, and I say this, it's really difficult. There's no question, it's, it's exceptionally difficult. Um, but being blind to the result and really focusing on the process. You know, when we look at individual sports, swim, track, we look at, you know, as they ramp up to get ready for, you know, that one particular moment, in race, you know, in swim, are they tapering? In track, are they, you know, gearing up where they feel good? Whatever that may be for each individual athlete. You know, a pitcher in some cases too. Um, I'm going to pitch on Saturday. What's my workload? And sticking to a process, and and being committed to that process, and and not being behold to the result. For me, that's really key. Is is our programs look? The results will come if you stick to the process. And I, I know that sounds cliche, but that is, that is really important. Um, as many of you know, I'm in, I say this, and the guys that are probably watching this a little bit back home, um, they know I'm really passionate about golf. I was a terrible golfer when I started. I'm not great now, but um, I had to stick to a process where individually I had to commit to figure out a way to get better you know, to become a single digit handicap and to learn how to do things that I had never done before. And it was just really me, the clubs, you know, figuring it out. And being committed to a process to try to get better is really key. And when I reflect back as a coach, there's been a number of individuals who helped me, you know, and you need people. But again, not to sound redundant, but focusing on the, on the process. And I think that's where my strength is as a leader is to dissect process to challenge coaches in ways to perfect their process and be really efficient. I think that's really key. Now, the most difficult part of that is we have some seasoned and wonderful coaches, right, that have had a lot of success. So are they gonna allow me to challenge them immediately to do that? Well, that goes back to how I finish this, this conversation. Progress is gonna, you know, progress will move at the speed of um, trust. So I gotta earn their trust. So in this next 30, 60, 90 days, I got to figure out a way to do that. So. Anything more? Well, thank you very much. I'll hand it over to Chancellor Smith. Thank you so much. More than anything, it's, um, it means the world to me that this room is full and it doesn't surprise me. And for those, again, that were on the committee and I've had an opportunity to meet you very briefly, thank you so much for your commitment uh, on behalf of the athletics department. I really appreciate it and look forward um, to a long, great career here. Thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, Jason, I'll take uh, individual interviews with any of the media that are here today as well. But I think this gives you some taste of why he came through the search process and why I ultimately made the decision. Uh, this is a professional, someone who's serious, committed, puts student athletes first, and it's all about building relationships. And he shows a lot of humility. He didn't point out that in 2019, he was uh, uh, athletic director of the year for all of Division Three. He's got a long history of success, and I know he'll be a great blue goal. So again, thank you for joining us and being a part of this team, and that'll conclude the formal part of the program. Thanks, everyone.